What is going on everybody? Today we're going to be talking about PTS1 and it actually surprised me how many players were actually playing this versus other PTS. Now we'll get into all those numbers. Also we'll, we'll get into what the developers actually said about this PTS and not only that we'll talk about when the next pts is going to go live so we'll get into all that in just a second i do want to say a quick thank you to our sponsor of this video advanced gg you guys know me one of my favorite energy supplements on the market one of the more healthier energy supplements on the part market and what i recommend is checking the label you can see it online i'll put a link to them use skills at checkout if you guys want to try them out this is my go-to energy supplement it gets me through my day and even when i'm done working i come home to edit create content and i have a little bit of advanced gg and it gets me through this so let's get into the video so if we look division two posted on their official division account said the division two pts is designed for players to test future content so you're able to provide feedback before it goes live to that end, we'd like to share what we heard from the community during phase one and what we're looking to address. And then it says PTS TU15, total players 15,217. And then it shows how many players were playing on April 1st, April 2nd, April 3rd. Now we compare this to TU10, which had 14,700. TU11 had 14,500. And TU12 had the worst at only 5,600. Now, I was wondering, are these unique players or the amount of players that played over time? And this says, just in case any confusion over the total, that's the total unique players. So that is actually pretty impressive given the fact that TU15 came out almost two years after TU10 and supposedly everybody says this game is dead. I'll have to ask my accountant about that. So it just lets you know that a lot of people are still really interested in the future of the Division 2 and they want to see more content. And if we get that content, obviously, we'll have a live game again. Now, we're going to click on the link and go in and check out what the PTS check-in phase one note said. It says, we opened Title Update 15 public test servers for PC players on Ubisoft Connect last Friday, 1st of April, 2022. And no, it wasn't an April Fool's joke. Our communications outlined that we would have three phases of the public test servers as well as announcing significant updates such as the countdown game mode and expertise feature we also outlined shield balancing changes new gear and weapons we're immensely grateful for all the feedback we received following phase one and we want to share our findings and the next steps based on our experiences on the pts and then you see pts phase one obviously we saw the total numbers again and how it beat out TU 10, 11, 12. It says in phase one, we wanted to focus your feedback and attention specifically on countdown and the expertise system. Now they get into the countdown and some of the changes that they're gonna do. And they talk about many of you dove straight into the countdown to explore the new eight player PVE mode and we're quick to share your thoughts. We wanted to acknowledge some of these key topics. And then it goes Delta three issues when matchmaking. It says, unfortunately for a lot of you, PTS one experience was tainted by numerous Delta three errors. I had a few of those issues. The main outlying issues has now been resolved and we are planning to further test the newly implemented fix during phase two. So if you guys want to test that out, go in, go out, see, see if it works. Um, make sure you guys aren't getting these Delta three errors. If you guys are, make sure you guys report it. But yeah, I was getting them too. It wasn't happening as much as other players, but I saw it. Another bug was that you were stuck in the infinite loading screen after being in the countdown mode. This issue is now being worked on and should be resolved in time for PTS phase two. And it says countdown is too easy. Now I heard that from a lot of people saying that with their max style builds, they felt that it was really easy. And then it says, Originally, the new mode was planned to be on par with the heroic difficulty. To add more context, our goal was to make it challenging but not impossible to beat for eight match made players of mixed build qualities, as well as add an additional challenge for the players with more organized group and better builds to try and complete it with less than eight players. The mode's difficulty is currently incomparable with what we envisioned for Countdown and your feedback over the past week reflects this. We are continuously working on improvements on the mode and for now you can expect Expect enemies HP adjustments though their lethality might stay the same as we do not want to overtune the difficulty to make sure that the countdown is highly replayable and suits the greater variety of playstyles. A lot of you mentioned one difficulty option is not enough to meet every, everyone's expectation. We hear you going forward. We are planning to investigate the 
the possibility of adding other difficulty options, but it's too early to talk about any specifics right now. So they might add a harder difficulty for all of you players who want that real grind. But for now, it looks like there's one difficulty, but they did add the, the HP adjustments and they still are gonna hit the same. So you probably won't feel any difference there, but they're gonna be a little bit chunkier. Now they do talk about the loot rewards in Countdown. Some of you guys said that the loot was dropping and it was a little too generous. Let's read what they said. They said, without a doubt, the rewards are one of the components of the mode's replayability and attractiveness, but that was not the primary intention behind the development. We would love the experience itself to be the main focus. Handing out too much loot can be frustrating when the mode is time limited and does not allow you to look at or sort through the loot drop. For the next PTS phase, what they plan on doing is remove rewards that drop for players at long distances. So I'm assuming so that you, you don't have to run all the way to go pick it up. So we'll see um, how that affects the loot drops. But I know a lot of people liked it. A lot of people enjoyed having that much loot. Now the XPT system is the new system that if you guys haven't checked out my video where I explain that, I recommend it. Gaining proficiency rank feels too fast. To earn expertise level, you need to gain proficiency ranks by using an item, brand, gear set, in combat. PTS phase one has shown that the gear sets are one of the main reasons for the unexpectedly speedy progression. You can expect the pace to be adjusted for PTS phase two by increasing the XP required for ranking up. Every one of you has a different value of time and when it comes to accounting for distinct types of players, it's a tough balancing exercise for us. By adjusting progression speed for phase two, we hope to give our most committed players something special they can dedicate their time to. Upgrade costs being too high is always a tricky exercise to balance progression pace and gauge feedback between those who have little time and want progress fast and those who want things to be grinding and slow. We hope to collect more feedback on the matter during the PTS phase two and three to help us. So obviously they wanna get more feedback from phase two and three before they make any changes. It says a donate all button. We agree that the expertise system would benefit for having a dedicated button in the menu for donating all items marked as junk in your inventory, similar to the de deconstruction all junk and selling all junk works. The donate all button was added to the expertise menu and should be available for testing in phase two. So all of you guys who do want to test that out, now there is a donate all button, which I'm excited for. There were many other observations aside for two key features of phase one and we want to highlight some of them below. Request to change countdown into a different gameplay style. We are always happy to hear your suggestions on new game modes, but there are no ongoing plans to change countdown beyond the difficulty options listed above. Shield changes. Right now, we don't have enough feedback to proceed with the decision, and we ask you to concentrate your efforts on the shield changes during PTS Phase 2, since its primary focus is testing new weapons and gear. The Intimidate Tenant allows an infinite stacking in the DZ. The issue is now fixed. Intimidate Talent should gain one stack each second when a player has temp armor up to max of seven. And they close it off to say, thank you for partaking in phase one of TU15 PTS. And please keep your thoughts coming as the community feedback has always been helpful to us in making the necessary adjustments for upcoming content. So it looks like we're getting phase two of PTS 15 tomorrow and I'm excited to go test that out. I think I get off a little bit early from work tomorrow and then I am off Friday. So I will be playing the PTS and I should have some videos up and loaded for you guys. Now, it is good to see that they are taking the feedback and listening to it. And I'm actually excited about the amount of players who actually were playing this 15,217. You guys have to think about this. TU10 was actually two years ago. So for this to come out two years later and to have more players than the original PTS 10 that we had two years ago, it, it, it actually makes a statement. Um, and, and that's what I like to see. Hopefully you guys are excited for what TU15 has to offer. Um, I'm gonna be testing it and I'll let you know what I find out. Thank you guys again for all the support, but I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, hey, nothing but skizzle. Take it easy, everybody.